In this video, we will show you the rare photos of Faith Hill and reveal to you some of her untold life stories. When Faith was just nine years old, she was exposed to the influence of Elvis Presley and then dropped out of school just to be like him. She struggled and toiled to get to the top of the industry. And when she finally got there, she made two more costly gambles that threatened to take away all she has sacrificed her entire life for. What exactly happened? Let's find out while showing you some of her rare photos. We all can agree that despite all the terrible things Elvis Presley did, he was still a good man, right? But how he was able to convince a nine-year-old to drop out of school is something that will always be remembered. Faith was already so in love with music right from her childhood, but meeting with the king of rock and roll was just the motivation she needed to damn everything and pursue what her heart desired. Her mother didn't want her as an infant, so she had her up for adoption. Edna and Terry Perry took her in and welcomed her to their family. They raised her in a solid Christian background alongside the couple's two other sons. She started singing in church when she was three and would have her first public performance four years later at a 4-H luncheon. But everything changed for her after she attended an Elvis Presley concert when she was nine. Young Faith was so impressed by the King's performance that she went home dreaming of when she would rock her own stage also with a microphone. And it didn't take long before Faith started working to make the dream a reality. After her encounter with Elvis, Faith joined the Steele Family Gospel Quartet, and they performed in different churches around where she lived. Sometimes after school, she would go to the Hines County Jail to perform for prisoners. Her favorite song was Amazing Grace. She attended college briefly, but when she could no longer hold it, she dropped out, packed her bags, and moved to Nashville in pursuit of her dream of becoming a country singer. She was optimistic, but she didn't expect it to be easy, and it wasn't. While attending many auditions, majorly for the role of a backup singer, Faith did a lot of odd jobs to keep food on her table. She sold t-shirts, did bookkeeping and secretarial jobs for a music publishing firm, and was forced to do something that she really hated, waiting tables. The young singer waited tables at a local McDonald's restaurant franchise, and it left her with an unforgettable experience. Fries, burgers, cash registers, I did it all, and I hated it, Faith confessed. Her time was going to come, but she was running out of patience. But fortunately for her, she won't have to wait too long anymore. One day, Faith was singing to herself when a co-worker overheard her, and with her influence, the head of a music publishing company was persuaded to sign her up as the demo singer of the firm. Gary performed regularly at Nashville's Bluebird Cafe, and during one of these performances, an executive from Warner Brothers Records was enchanted by Faith's voice. He offered her a better contract at the spot, and Faith jumped at it. Finally, she has won her slot to stardom, but all that came with it was an agonizing divorce and a string of other tragedies. Her life was about to change, and Faith thought she was ready for all that came with fame. She prayed for her ticket to stardom, and this was it. She was going to give it all that she had. The singer released her debut album, Take Me As I Am, and it blew up the international market. The album sold over 3 million copies, and Wild One, a single from the album, made Faith Hill the first female country singer in 30 years to hold Billboard's number one position for four consecutive weeks. Also, her version of Peace of My Heart also went on to top the country charts in 1994. Things were happening so fast, and finally, Faith was living the life she had dreamed of years ago. But then, tragedy struck, and it almost made sure that she never picked a microphone ever again. During the recording of Hill's second album, the blood vessels on her vocal cords ruptured, and Faith was forced through a painful surgery if she ever wanted the world to hear her voice again. The album compensated her for the trouble and brought her immense success. The title track, It Matters To Me, would become her third number one country single, with over three million copies of the album sold. Other songs you might remember from the album include I Can't Do That Anymore, written by Alan Jackson, You Can't Lose Me, Someone Else's Dream, and Let's Go to Vegas. Due to her previous experience, Faith decided to rest her voice, and for three years, there was nothing new from Faith Hill. But in her hiatus, Faith Hill kept breaking records. She released her first duet with the love of her life, Tim McGraw, and the song stayed at number one for six weeks. It earned her awards and recognition from both the Academy of Country Music and the Country Music Association. Her official comeback was in 1998 with her third album, Faith, and this was widely regarded as the peak of her career. The Kiss, a track from the album, became a number one country hit and was the first of her singles to trend on the pop charts, ranking at number seven. More than six million copies of the album were sold, and it won Faith three Grammy Awards 
including Best Country Album, Best Country Collaboration with Vocals, and Best Country Female Vocal Performance. Again, the world was at her feet and she was enjoying every bit of it. Faith received several endorsement deals while appearing on the cover of numerous magazines. She was the only singer who was listed among actresses and other celebrities. And so, Faith Hill became one of the most successful country music artists of all time. This was the peak of her career. And what do most people do at the peak of their career? They feel comfortable and start experimenting with new things. And that's exactly what Faith did. She started experimenting, and then she experimented with something that almost destroyed all that she had built. Here's what happened. Faith was making waves with her hits in country music, but she got bored and decided to try something different. She wanted to switch to the pop music industry, and when she did, she was met with such controversy that most people believed that her downfall was imminent. With the release and success of This Kiss from the album Faith, the American singer provoked a lot of music insiders who believed that she was trying to abandon her country roots and move to the pop genre. But Faith Hill just didn't care enough. She solidified her transformation as a pop diva with her fifth studio album, The Cry. And although the album didn't receive as many listens as her previous albums, it still brought her a Grammy. On her award night as the CMA Female Vocalist of the Year, Faith addressed the recent controversies by saying, I love this business and I love this industry. My heart is here. True to her words in 2005, Faith returned to the countryside with her album, Fireflies. It received so much recognition and her debut single, Mississippi Girl, became her highest debuting single ever. The following year, Hill and her husband, Tim McGraw, hit the roads for her Soul 2 Soul Tour, which would become the highest grossing country music tour ever with a gross of $90 million. Still on her experimentations, during her glory days, Faith decided to carry some of her magic into the acting industry. Although that didn't turn out as she had expected, she was still glad that she gave it a shot. She made her acting debut in the 1997 popular television series, The Promised Land. The series was well received, but it did not do so much for Faith's career. Her film debut would come seven years later, and it was an even greater success than her last feature. Faith Hill was cast in the director Frank Oz's remake of the 1975 thriller, The Stepford Wives, alongside film stars Nicole Kidman, Matthew Broderick, and Glenn Close. The movie received mixed reviews but still earned over $100 million. In 2015, Faith was featured in the American crime drama film Dixieland. The film was written and directed by Hank Bedford and had stars like Chris Zilka, Riley Keough, Spencer LaFranco, and Steve Earle. A more recent appearance was in 2022 in an episode of Yellowstone. But what about her relationship and marriages? Well, Faith is one of the very few industry-leading women to be blessed with uncommon marriages and relationships. Though her first marriage ended with a heart-shattering divorce, Hill was going to come back with a happily ever after with American singer, Tim McGraw. The actress has been engaged three times, but has tied the knot twice. Her first marriage was to music publishing executive Daniel Hill. This happened during her obscure years when she served as a secretary. She fell in love with her boss and he led her to the altar in 1988. Faith prayed for this one to last forever. However, the pressures of their careers and her rapid rise to stardom were going to tear them apart. They were together for four years and in 1994, they went their separate ways. While Faith's career blossomed, very little is known about what Daniel has been up to. Faith found love again in the arms of music producer Scott Hendricks, and this time she was going to be the one to break his heart. Scott produced Faith's first album, Take Me As I Am, and he would engage her shortly afterward. However, she found a more intoxicating love with Tim McGraw, who at that time was also engaged, but they were going to sever every tie to be together. According to Billboard, Faith and Tim met for the first time at the Opryland Hotel in Nashville, and Tim's girlfriend knew that Faith was trouble immediately when she saw her. For me, there was an intense physical attraction. I guess my girlfriend saw it in my eyes, McGraw confessed. She said, I don't want you around her. She was right to be scared, as McGraw was going to dump her for his newly found love. Though they were madly in love with each other, Tim revealed that Faith kept on turning down his proposal for marriage. She said, I'm not going to get involved with another country singer. It's just not going to work out, he recalled Faith saying. He kept persisting until he was finally able to change her mind. In 1996, in a surprise wedding in McGraw's aunt's backyard, the couple exchanged vows, and they've stuck together ever since. 
The couple became the face of country music with their famous releases in the late 90s and early 2000s. Some of their most popular duets include Let's Make Love, It's Your Love, The Rest of Our Life, I Need You, and the latest, Keep Your Eyes on Me. On the secret of their long-lasting relationship, amid the troubles and pressures from their careers, Faith said, We just made a commitment early on, when we first decided we were getting married and having kids, that we wouldn't just walk out the door when problems arose. During the early years of their marriage, McGraw struggled with alcoholism, and he attributes his wife to being the reason why he made it out. I guarantee you, had I not gotten married to Faith at 29 years old, A, I probably would have run my career into the ground, B, I would have died already with my career into the ground, McGraw confessed. The couple share three daughters, Gracie, Maggie, and Audrey. Time and again, Faith has shown that she is willing to give up everything for her girls and family, and that is probably why it has lasted this long. In August 2023, McGraw, on Entertainment Weekly, confessed that he is really looking forward to a collaboration with his wife and three daughters. They are the life of the party every time they are around, Tim said of his kids. I'd love to do a song with all five of us at some point. I talk about it all the time and they are like, I ain't singing with you, dad. Gracie is an actress in LA, and like her parents, she has shown that she has real musical talents. Occasionally, she displays her singing prowess on her social media pages, and in 2015, she shared the stage with her father at Nashville's Bridgestone Arena. Very little is known about Faith's second daughter, Maggie, except that she steps out time and again to support her parents in public events. Their last child, Audrey, is also in show business, and she made her acting debut in her dad's music video, 7500 OBO. Beyond acting and singing, Faith has shown a strong flair for the business world. With the launch of her fragrance line in 2009, the singer proved that she has what it takes to survive in the entrepreneurship environment. Her first fragrance was titled Faith Hill Parfums, and it is a blend of Southern Magnolia, Jasmine, and Peach Piers. In 2010, Hill released her second fragrance titled True. These days, Faith seems to be resting her voice while she spends more time with her family. Her ability to cross over to pop and her influence on contemporary country music solidified her as a prominent figure in the industry. Faith Hill, now 56 years old, seems to have found the secret to not just aging, but doing so in a remarkably graceful and sophisticated manner. She enjoys celebrity life with her family in their mansion in Tennessee, the celebrity singer has an estimated net worth of $200 million. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.